and this might be a leading cause for the morbidity once we make all the efforts to survive these babies and uh, as he uh, dr ayman said so 5 to 10% of them would have some kind of uh, uh, deficits so if we look at the terminology which we are using for the preterm uh, injury intraventricular hemorrhage which is synonymous to germinal matrix hemorrhage uh, which is a capillary bleed from the germinal matrix and then periventricular hemorrhage the same as as grade 4 ivh which is a venous impact of the medullary vein and then the focal pvl which is necrosis of the watershed area and diffuse pvl which is a diffuse uh, injury so we'll be talking in detail about it but what is our concern is why we are talking about it is because of the fact that um, uh, though we have come down on the uh, ivh uh, grades but uh, we still do have and uh, from 40 to 60 percent of ivh we have come down to 10 to 25 percent and as dr ayman talked about the strategies if we are going to uh, make in our nicu then it's going to go further down but still we cannot have no ivh and especially uh, grade 3 and 4 ivh are still prevailing and they have a lot of uh, impact on our uh, babies when they grow so they will have spasticity motor deficits cognitive and behavioral uh, problems and the cerebral palsy so uh, if you look at uh, what he was talking about the brain uh, the iq is the main thing which we we all deal with and we i'm standing here with some um, iq to uh, so we need our babies to have uh, and i don't want any baby to have even less no mom will have like to have one 1% one less so if you look at the ivh and if, especially with the grade 4 ivh the iq gets uh, affected a lot and um, as the uh, uh, grades are improving the ivh uh, uh, the the iq is better but still it's not completely normal so that's important message which goes here and even when you follow these babies at ideas they have found that they do need some spa, special classroom assistance they need some special education courses and repeated at least one school grade so if we talk about pathophysiology of preterm brain i will take you back to the school college days where we would just uh, uh, freshing our memories on how the baby brain develops so it starts with the primary neuralation parencephalic development uh, neuronal proliferation migration organization and myelination which starts from 3 to 4 weeks and continue even after the myelination continues even when the baby is born so if anything happens to this during the primary neuralation when the notochord and caudal mesoderm is being formed we might have an encephaly myeloschisis uh, encephalocele and uh, chiari type 2 uh, malformation something happens when the four brain is being uh, formed uh, uh, uh and the face you might have holoprosen cephaly and holotelin cephaly and later on when the corpus callosum is getting developed then that time if something happens to our baby's brain then agenesis of corpus callosum septum pellucidum and septic optic dysplasia is quite uh, common neuronal proliferation continues from um, um, um five weeks up to a uh, later age so anything which hampers this proliferation you will have microencephaly macroencephaly tuberous sclerosis and any walker malformation so this uh, neuronal migration is very important which is happening at simultaneously in the cerebrum level and at the cerebellum level and it is two types radial migration and the tangential migration anything which causes prop, uh, brain gets affected you may have schism for any uh, cephaly lesencephaly and pachygyry so these are very important and uh, so is the organization so we should also look at these uh, aspects that uh, even when the growth and synapses are being formed 6 months to 1 year they and something goes wrong there we may have developmental disability and autism so again the myelination myelination is important and myelination may get affected in certain syndromes and this is uh, we have to see whether uh, our babies uh, fall into that cat categories or not so this is the brain development uh, which i talked of like neuronal migration to estrocytogenesis oligodendrogenesis axonal and dendritic growth and synaptogenesis which is happening coming back to our very loved uh, subject ivh and pvl so we can see that uh, this is the caudal nucleus and uh, this is the lateral ventricles and this is the germinal matrix so we have those uh, fibers going for the leg trunk and the arm from medial to the lateral side so 
the grade one IVH comes here where uh, the germinal matrix is. And this is a grade two IVH when it is uh, covering two third of the IVH, uh, the lateral ventricle. This is grade three IVH when it is covering more than two third and it is also causing ventriculomegaly. And grade four IVH is a periventricular hemorrhagic infarct. And then comes a focal PVL, which is just above the lateral ventricle. And this is a diffuse PVL, which is involving a lot and lot of areas of the brain. So if anything goes wrong here, like if there is a grade 2 IVH to grade 4 IVH, there may be a post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus, or you may have a ulateral porencephalic uh, cyst and asymmetrical ventriculomegaly if you have a grade 4 IVH. Bilateral focal ventriculomegaly can occur following focal PVL and bilateral diffuse ventriculomegaly following diffuse PVL. So these are the sequelae we are uh, really uh, dreading on. Coming to IVH, we all know that uh, site of origin is subependymal germinal matrix and we all know that the cerebral neuronal precursors, uh, they, these are the sources for that and uh, this is are between 10 to 20 weeks of gestational age. The glial precursors, cerebral oligodendroglial and astrocytes are coming from here as well. And as the gestational age is increasing, the size of this is decreasing. So it will be around 2.5 millimeter at 23 to 24 weeks. It is 1.4 millimeter at 32 weeks and nearly it completely evolutes by 36 weeks. So this can be seen by this uh, uh, beautiful uh, um, uh, the, um, cartoon picture. And uh, what happens is that if you see these veins, and uh, we should know that this is all vascular uh, uh, site of origin, it is uh, not arterial, it is venous. And uh, uh, when the uh, terminate vein, it, it is actually curving and joining the internal cerebral vein, it is taking a U-turn. And all the veins, if you see, they are parallel to the major veins are parallel to the ventricular system. And hence, there would be certain factors which may cause IVH. There are intravascular factors, there are vascular factors, and there are extravascular factors. So the intravascular factors are fluctuating blood pressures. Anything which will cause our babies to have increased cerebral blood flow, uh, like hypertension, or you give rapid boluses, which are to be avoided, or if you have too much of anemia, the blood flow will uh, start going higher or you have hypoglycemia, all these will try to compensate and increase the blood flow to the brain. Uh, cerebral venous pressure, if uh, by the venous anatomic arrangements, labor and vaginal deliveries, as Dr. Ayman said, uh, it's more in the vaginal deliveries, that's why, uh, and res respiratory disturbances will cause increase in the cerebral venous pressure. Anything which will reduce the cerebral blood flow is also harmful, like if you have a systemic hypotension, and platelet and coagulation disturbances. Then the vascular factor, we all know the babies are born preterm, so they have a tinnus capillary integrity. They may, they are still involuting and remodeling, so they may get damaged quite quickly. And they have a vulnerability of the matrix. So capillaries to any, any hypoxic injury occurs, the matrix is vulnerable. Extra vascular factors like uh, uh, deficient vascular extra uh, cellular matrix support or uh, another thing is excessive fibrinolytic activity. Both may be a problem. And hence, Whenever we are ventilating our premature babies, we may cause decrease in the cerebral blood flow. We can cause fluctuating cerebral blood flow. We can also cause opposite increase in cerebral blood flow or increase in the central uh, cerebral venous pressure. All of them will cause capillary rupture. And along with that, there will be endothelial injury and germinal matrix vulnerability playing a role. And then if we have intravascular factors playing uh, with it, that we have thrombocytopenia, we have uh, coagulation disorders, or we have extravascular fibrinolytic uh, activity, all will lead to IVH. And so wh what will happen to the brain if the IVH is happening? So first we have a preceding hypoxic ischemic injury. Now the IVH has occurred and we said that there is a, a glial and the neuronal uh, precursors are coming from there, so they get destroyed. There is also a destruction of periventricular white matter because when we have PVHI, it is going uh, beyond. And so there will be impairing the cortical organization. So this periventricular white matter injury, which results from intraventricular parenchymal and subarachnoid blood products with vasoconstriction, and also there is a generation of free radical injuries which may also cause further damage. There is an alteration in the cerebellar development. And of course, the intra
Chronical hypertension and impaired cerebral perfusion is making the brain damage more and more. And once the bleed has occurred, it is blocking, it is causing hydrocephalus, it is damaging further the brain. So the risk factors, if we take all together, they are, if the baby, our baby is born premature, we have not given steroids to the, our moms. We have asphyxia, we are giving rapid boluses, we are giving bicarbs, which should be out of your uh, uh, tray, I would say. Uh, if we are giving, not using TPs, resuscitator and giving bag and mask and causing pneumothorax, we are not ventilating with the volume guarantee and we are actually causing hypo or hypercarbia. We have fluctuating blood pressures, asynchrony and coagulopathy. We are suctioning the babies unnecessarily. These are all the risk factors which should not be done. When do you suspect IVH? Any baby who is born less than 32 weeks, especially when baby is less than 30 weeks, if I be, a baby may have two kind of courses. It may be a stuttering slow course or it may be a sudden catastrophic presentation. Mostly it is stuttering and we may just have a drop in PCV. They may be just a little poor perfusion or subtle seizures. A catastrophic uh, approach uh, presentation is very less and usually there will be a sudden stupor, hypotonia. You will, a call, uh, you will get a call from your uh, registrars right in 2 o'clock acidotic, hypoglycemic, baby going into posturing and seizures. Then comes the PVL. So we all know the change in the spectrum of the white matter. There is maybe a cystic or a non-cystic PVL. Both of them can be either focal or can be diffuse. So what is the pathogenesis? This is very important slide. In, whenever you have a hypoxic ischemia, it can be severe or it can be mild. When you have a severe hypoxic ischemia, then it may cause a pan-cellular death. And so there will be a periventricular uh, necrosis. This will lead to cystic PVL and this actually causes a damage, pancellular means exons, oligodendroglials, neurons all die. And hence there will be effect on the neuronal loss, primary neuron loss and myelination failure. The second type is when you have a less hypoxic ischemic injury, when you have a selective pre-oligodendroglial death. Now this pre-oligodendroglial, they have a capacity to regenerate themselves, but their regeneration gets blocked. And when it gets blocked and maturation rests, there will be a gliosis. And this will cause myelination failure. So in this, you, your exons are spared, your neurons are spared. So the only thing which is getting affected is your pre-oligodendroglials. So mainly the prediction is in the, uh, 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 near the uh, trigon and for Roman of Monroe. And the, the, these sites are actually uh, more affected because of the vascular supply and also the oligodendroglyads in this part is more uh, vulnerable. So whenever you have a preterm birth, there is an inflammation, there is a release of the free radicals and this causes excitotoxicity, this causes white matter uh, 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 derangements and repair. So what would be the risk factor for our uh, babies to have PBL? Again, our babies are born too premature. We are causing hypocarbia. We are uh, having hypotension, hypoxia, acidosis, and chorioamniotis, infections, APH, twins. They are more uh, risk for getting a PBL. And when do we suspect? Again, all those preterm babies less than 32, especially less than 30, very few signs are there in the first two weeks. That's why we say that we should do a ultrasounds to find it out. Later on, you may have babies with a lower uh, uh, limb tone, increased neck extensor tone, pseudo bulbar palsy, and seizures. So, and when you uh, see them later, it will be a hypertonia. So, uh, mostly if you see 50% would be occurring on day one, IVH, 75% by day two, and 90% by day three. So they will progress and 100% they will be uh, by two weeks. PVL usually prayer will come within a week, cyst within two to three weeks, and they progress by six weeks. So that's why when should you do your ultrasound? I try to do my ultrasound on day one itself to see if any uh, antenatal uh, issues have occurred, but uh, at least you should do on day three when most of the IVH and PVH have already occurred. On day 14, when all the IVH and PVH has occurred and early PVL is starting, and then you should repeat at 36 to 40 weeks when PVL may manifest. There is no role of MRI or CT scan for these babies at the, this time. You may do a diffusion-weighted MRIs if you are doing some studies, and then you have to follow them up. 
So for IVH and PVH, you should be doing ultrasound weekly and SOS. For PVH, you should be doing ultrasound to look at the last cyst. But if you want to look at the white matter damage, then you should be doing an MRI. PVL, again, you can do ultrasound to look at ventriculomegaly and last cyst. But you need an MRI to look at diffuse white matter damage and the small cyst. So uh, I think the preterm uh, neuroprotection strategies were taken up by uh, Dr. Ayman. Can I have a few minutes to go through them or a few minutes? Okay. So I'll just go through them. Antenatal transfer of anticipated preterm delivery is very important. For you, you were given 10 minutes, Dr. Ayman. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. And this is very important because uh, um, uh, when you are actually transferring the mother, uh, the baby, you may cause uh, too many issues. So better to transfer the uh, mom and not the baby. And it has been seen in the uh, studies that it did reduce IVH. Antenatal steroids, uh, I will not go to the uh, causes, but it uh, causes a reduction in IVH and PVL. And also uh, long-term outcome that it does reduce the CP as well. Magnesium sulfate. It has reduced uh, cerebral palsy and uh, different uh, 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 studies have shown that it does reduce the PVL as well. Then infection in the moms can cause PVL and IVH. So if you reduce infection in the mothers, you give antibiotics to these uh, moms, especially erythromycin, it does help. And uh, latency after preterm premature rupture of membrane. This is very important. So if you have chorioaminitis, you should deliver immediately. But just for the PPRM, Without any infection, it may do harm. And postnatal infections are delayed cord clamping because it will reduce fluctuations in the blood pressure. And uh, this is very important. Caffeine, which is, has shown that it does reduce uh, uh, not only apnea, but it has improvement in the cognitive uh, outcome. Indomethacin prophylaxis has great effect on the IVH and the PVL. And also, a long-term outcomes for these babies were seen to be uh, uh, much better. Then, volume-targeted ventilation is very important because hypo and hypercarbia both will be uh, 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 controlled. And preventing infection is very, 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 very important for everything, for neuroprotection, for BPD, for all. Clepsy prevention, you should have VAP bundles in your unit. And uh, <clears throat> breast milk, I'm a great, great, great fan of breast milk. Mother's own milk can have lots of wonders. Nutrition is very important. So mother's own milk will have a better neurodevelopmental outcome. It will reduce the BPD as well. But also you should take care of the nutrition on the whole because if the nutrition is okay, then the baby is going to have a better neurodevelopmental outcome. He talked about Kangaroo Mother Care. I wanted to show this uh, uh, 2021 Sorry, thank, uh, article. Thank Last slide which showed that kangaroo mother care, because I'm a real great fan of the mother's own milk and kangaroo mother care, it did improve the neurodevelopmental outcome of the babies who were given kangaroo mother care. So please, take home message would be, please give breast milk and kangaroo mother care. These are coming up once, melatonin and stem cells. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.